Hello, everyone. It's KDWI7YL here for the Ham Radio Outlet Check Chat. It's Friday, April 17th, and here we are. Welcome to my shack here in Sundance, Wyoming. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and I am um, back feeling a little bit better than last week. Thanks, everybody, for hanging in with me if you were watching last week. As you know, it's two weeks ago today now that I had my gallbladder surgery. And, um, you know, I did the show last week and it was a little too soon. I think, you know, that I was having a problem with my voice. And I think part of that was, you know, the um, tube that you put they put in you. I think it made my uh, throat raw and my uh, vocal cords. So I am still filled up with Ricolas and water today. So I am ready to rock and roll. <laughs> so welcome one and all, no matter where you're from. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I know we've got friends from all over the world that like to watch and we're really having a lot of fun. Appreciate all the great support that we've had from you guys so far and trying out a couple of new things today. So with that being said, first of all, you know, my usual way I like to start the show is to let you know something about today in history. Well, hopefully a lot of you guys are already aware, you know, based on NASA, today is the 50th anniversary of the successful and safe landing of Apollo 13. What an interesting time it was to be around. And, uh, you know, of course I was only about, you know, three and a half months old, so I don't remember it, but maybe our guest does today. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, look at this. Now I've got some new features coming up here. There's my friend Jack N7MJ. Hello, Jack. Thanks for joining us down in Arizona. And Greg and Judy are with us, W0QI and W1ORO. And good morning, Todd. Great to have you guys joining us here today. We're testing out some new things. So Anyway, um, one other thing, we were, we, we were looking at the uh, History Channel's um, This Day in History information today and wondering, you know, there had to be some hams in the room around Apollo 13 when all of that was happening. So I did a little bit of research and this, and we knew about this one particular gentleman, or actually I should say my husband did. Um, <laughs> oh, and uh, his name was Tony England. And he was actually from Fargo, North Dakota and graduated from West Fargo High, the same high school as my stepson. Well, we did a little digging around and um, Tony W0ORE now lives in Michigan. But when they were trying to figure out how to fix the Apollo 13, apparently he was one of the engineers sitting at the table when they dumped all these pieces and parts on the table says, OK, let's figure this out. So. There's a little bit of ham history. I don't know exactly how perfectly accurate it is, but it's always fun to know that there was ham radio folks involved in um, NASA. Of course, we know tons of, you know, it's kind of, you know, I always say one of the fun things about ham radio is that I actually know like real life rocket scientists. <laughs> and, you know, when you meet somebody you say, oh, what do you do for a living? I'm a rocket scientist. Oh, okay. Well, that's not actually a big surprise, especially when you're down in say Florida or down in, um, Alabama down at say the Huntsville Ham Fest. You always run into rocket scientists down there. So anyway, this is definitely a wonderful day to celebrate the safe return of our astronauts. And I also saw on Twitter this morning that the Suyas um, safely returned this morning, or maybe it was this evening, not sure with the time change over in Russia. But, you know, if you keep an eye out on NASA's Twitter pages, you can keep up with all of those things. Well, good morning to Ken. And okay, so as I mentioned, we are having a guest today, and to get prepared, let me, let me get my mask on. Okay, I'd like to officially welcome Chip Margelli, K7JA. Good, Good morning, morning USA <laughs> and everywhere. <laughs> All right, we're keeping ourselves safe here, even though we are like, what, 2,000 miles apart? <laughs> I don't know. You look like you're about two feet away from me, Katie. I know. Well, there you go. We're not six feet apart, so we need to stay safe, but I think we're okay. So <laughs> I'm going to take this off so we can talk, you know, are, are last you, week, are you sure you want me to do this? <laughs> I think we'll be okay. <laughs> you know, last week, if you saw the show last week, my mom popped in along the way when I was having some issues with talking and she just posted that she promised not to crash the show today. I just thought I'd share that comment kind of funny. So as you can see, we've got lots of folks that are 
popping in the show today from all over. Here's our Axel is always our first DX to check in. Good Leave morning, Axel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's Dave WT9E. There's our friends over in Fargo, Joe and Linda, and zero RF and N zero LG. North. Shane is here, W6RUT, and good afternoon to you, William. He says, or is it still morning? What day is it? I know, doesn't it feel like that? You and I are still working, so I don't know that <clears throat> we're affected as much. How do you feel about, you know, you're you're working from home, so but you don't get to go out and, mm -hmm. say, run to Starbucks or, you know, go do your normal shopping. So it's yeah. certainly, and right. in Southern California, your rules are much stricter than we are here in Wyoming. Yeah, well, I, you know, I walk around the block if I have a, a, you know, a brief break in the morning and afternoon and at lunchtime, I'll get on my bike and ride around the neighborhood with my mask on and oh, okay. uh, just, just keep, uh, keep the blood flowing and things like that. But you gotta, you gotta get up, you gotta get out. And I, you know, I encourage everybody to do that, to, but be, be smart, be safe, be practical about it. And it will all be okay. Absolutely. So today we're going to, you know, last week I attempted to start discussing, you know, the fact that it's spring and time for maintenance, you know, with your towers and antennas. And, um, I, you know, obviously I kind of lost my voice through it and didn't get very far with it. So I thought, well, I know that you had been doing some work out there on your antennas and <clears throat> being a friend who works on antennas all the time. And see, here's another reason I brought you back. Apparently I'm still not <laughs> fully healed enough to talk a lot. <laughs> um, so I know you came up with some ideas that you could share with our viewers here who are watching some simple and inexpensive ways to um, not only once they're done checking on their antennas, but to also fix them up. So with that, what, what are you first thinking about? What, tell me, how do you start your whole process of spring maintenance on your antennas? Well, after I get done shoveling the snow here in Southern California, <laughs> Uh, yeah, then I can start doing things in earnest. Actually, I just did my first tower climb in quite a few months. A uh, couple of uh, uh, er earlier in the week, I uh, was able to scamper up real quick like and grab my wow. Christmas lights and drag them down. Having had my knee replaced in December, that's kind of a thing that I had to put off. But fortunately, the rigging is so easy. I just zip up and then each step down to chunk, 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 and right. get that done. So yes, it's that time of year to uh, be thinking about stuff. And the first thing you obviously think about is, okay, weather. We've had crazy weather. We've had rain. We've had snow. Right. We've had wind. Um, but we can't always be thinking back. We need to be thinking forward based on you know, where we are and you know what we might need to anticipate as happening. Um, you know, we've got to... Uh, realize that yes we've had the, the rain and the snow we need to look for what might be broken but we also have to be thinking that we have a time of high ultraviolet radiation coming up and so things like polypropylene ropes and stuff you know we need to be thinking about their half-life right now and see if, right. if they're going to deteriorate when we get uh you know quite a few days with a lot of sun exposure and then here comes a thunderstorm um, oh, and sure. what's going to happen? Are we going to suddenly have a rope that's a 5% of what it really is capable of, of holding uh, under normal circumstances? Right. We've got to be thinking forward as well as back. So, and I, I bet some of those, they kind of, you know, they lose their strength that even if you don't see them fraying, but and that's what you're checking for. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, they may be fraying and you just can't see them. The problem is oh, you know, okay. the top side, it helps to uh, take a look at them with binoculars, for example, and see, oh, this oh. looks like pretty yellow down here. But I look up right. there and boy, it's yellow, yellow, yellowish, yellow, whitish, whitish. Uh oh. And, you know, if you if you can fix things in a controlled manner, Right. It's a whole lot easier than fixing them, than replacing them, you know, especially if it involves, you know, climbing a tree or something like that. Oh, That's absolutely. <laughs> and so, yes, there are obvious things that you think about. Okay, we've come through rain and, and things like that. Check for rust. Uh, you've oh, got, uh, yeah. you know, and, and not just... Uh, no, not just looking at the base of your tower, the nuts and the bolts, they're fine. Obviously, you want to check that. And at the base of the tower, if you live in a in a snowy and icy environment, you just literally want to look at the legs and make sure that the legs have mm. not developed cracks in them. It's possible okay. in the winter to have mm. water get down inside 
and then freeze cold, freeze cold. And oh. what happens when things freeze? They expand. And it's possible for ice to break steel. I've seen it happen. Really? So, so that's something to look at. But other things, uh, if you have a tower, um, and on the end of the tower, you either have uh, these preformed guy grips, the Chinese finger torture thing, or you have other <laughs> hardware. And, and literally, look at that stuff and see if there's right. any kind of rust. If there's just a tiny dusting of rust, maybe it's time to get out some rust rolling and paint um, or to replace things if it's really, really bad. Right. Um, and uh, the other thing is, if you have a tower and you maybe it's a tall tower and you're using Philly strand non-conductive guys, you need to look at every uh, preformed guy grip at the base and make sure that it's not splayed apart. It is possible um, to have ice balls form up on your tower, and then when it warms up, the Philly strand gets warm, the okay. ice ball is up there, it comes zooming down, and it whacks the guy grip. Well, if it does that enough times, right, the end of it can splay open, and and of course that can be bad juju because um, this ice ball can be heavy and it can be coming at close to terminal velocity. Um, the the fix is easy. Put a hose right. cap on each on each guy grip at the bottom, and you're you're done. It'll never splay open. But those are things you sometimes don't think to do when you're installing. So right. that's um that's kind of fun. Now throughout your installation you need to look for not only signs of weather ingress from rain and snow and stuff but also critter mischief you know hungry rodents will often nibble at something in the winter time thinking well maybe i can eke a meal out of this right <laughs> um, and you know things like coaxial and stuff they're a little little mushy and they think oh maybe I, this is a piece of bread or something and you know critters do that more than <laughs> once and you know eventually you suddenly have a hole in your weatherproofing that you need to look at, need to resolve, either clean up or totally replace. Um, and so, you know, we've got great products available. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned coax seal, if I can get it in there. And there are also things like, um, uh, th this is great for spatially, uh, your rotator on your tower, getting in tight places is tough to tape around things like the connector on the Yesu and other rotators that uh, has that nice, oh, yeah. on it. but you need to seal over that. And it's hard to get in there with your fingers with anything right. with coax seal. And it, it's really dynamite for something like that. And mm -hmm. then we have, you know, things like coax wrap that exists. This is uh, self amalgamating tape. If I can get my, my, my directions right here. I know. <laughs> and this is, um, this is sticky oh, you know self amalgamating tape. I mean, a lot of us, uh, Katie knows how much black tape I go through during a year. But oh, yeah. going over the black tape, uh, a, a coating of, did I just disappear? Oh, there we go. No, no, um, no you're off. I threw you off to the side there, just sharing fine. this where people can um, see what you're the, talking uh, about on the website. Yeah, the, the, the coax wrap <laughs> stuff for something like a, uh, a PL259 is really great. It's self-amalgamating, which means that it sticks to itself. Right. So you take your uh, connector and just hold it down, put a good stretch. Oh. Soon. Sorry it, about that. Hit the wrong button. Keep going. It's okay. It grabs and you keep putting the stretch on it. Keep putting the stretch on it. Keep putting <laughs> the stretch on it. And on the last one, you back off a little bit so there's not all that pressure. And now you've got something that is liter literally impervious to the weather. And when, oh, wow. you, you know, when it gets time to uh, take it off, the, the nice part is all you have to do and I'll try to do this without slitting my fingers off. Yeah. But just no injury take, in yourself, please. Yeah, you just take your uh, Swiss Army knife here mm -hmm. and give it a quick deal like that, and it comes off without having comp. Whoops, goes flying too, <laughs> flying off like that. Um, so it's very easy to take it off and inspect to see how are right. uh, you doing in sight. So that's kind of fun stuff, and um, that is pretty cool. Yeah, it is great. And you can put that on literally on top of the black tape. And if you uh, want to get completely crazy, you can do coax seal. But, um, you know, these are just different things. A coax seal, I really like for those tight places. Oh, it's, it's just great. Right. And then mush it in like clay and just push the air out. And then there, there's going to be nothing getting into there. Right. Um, the other thing I'd mention, um, uh, if you have a crank up tower, the obvious thing after winter is to look at uh, the lubrication of the cables and look for any mm. rust on the hardware there because, well, you you know, 
the crank up towers are great, but they do present some peril if not properly maintained and lubricated. So they'll, they'll last forever if you do that, but you gotta be very, right. very careful. Now, if I just mentioned crank up towers, if you have a yeah. crank up and uh, tilt over tower, if you have the ability to access your antennas, Mm -hmm. uh, it's always good if you have a Yagi, for example, that's got telescoping sections of aluminum, or if you're in the uh, British Empire, the, the aluminium. Alu um, aluminium. <laughs> um, it's always good to go along each element tip and just grab the element and twist it. Okay. And see if it moves. It shouldn't move. If it moves, oh. that means that a hose clamp or some other hardware in there is nasty. It's, gotcha. It's, it's shaking loose. You know, you got you got these things up there, and the elements are going if they resonate in a particular wind speed and mm -hmm. it's possible over time for a hose clamp to get loose. Uh, okay. Once you identify if you do have a, a loose hose clamp, it's always best to assume the water has gotten in. Pull the element out, clean it, and yep. then uh, goober it uh, before you put it back in. Now, you know, we, there are things like uh, Penetrox that are excellent for providing a uh, a Ooh. lubrication. It's uh, zinc based, and it it the, the purpose of the Penetrox uh, and other things like it is not to provide the electrical connection. It is okay. To, it is one hundred percent to keep water out. It's to gotcha. seal, not to make the connection. If you're making the connection with with something gooey, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> and uh, and so before you put the goober on, of course, you want to since you have assumed that water has gotten in and if it's loose it probably has you want to clean that intersection and okay. and don't use steel wool because steel wool oh. can leave very very fine steel particles that are you know of worse conductivity than the aluminum that you're bonding uh that you're joining um, so like the yeah. aluminum pad that you might use to clean your dishes or something with Scotch something like right. that Yes, Scotch Bright, like you would use for washing dishes. That's correct. Yeah. It's not it's not metal based, but it it does an okay. excellent, spectacular job on uh, cleaning this up. And as soon as you get done with that, put the goober on, tighten yep. it up, and go on to the next element, and you will be good. Uh, oh, yeah, it, it, yeah, that a lot of people use steel. Well, I used it for years. I mean, and it makes it all very pretty. But what you can't see at the microscopic level is all that steel that is now forming a possibility of rust on the inside. And right, yikes! <laughs> hey, and here's perfect timing. Debbie's asking the question. She says she has a. Well, can you read it? A laser beam. I'm not sure what the TGEY or in the barn. And she wants to clean it before she puts it up. But how do you keep the weather oxide? off i'm guessing we're, we're interpreting your question here debbie uh, uh, i'm not sure i quite comprehend what we're doing there um i don't know if it's something hmm. oh if you're, if you're trying to clean the lens or something like that i would use compressed air i think oh uh, otherwise yeah. just use a, a a damp cloth uh with maybe nothing more than water or something like that. Cause a lot of, if there are any plastics involved, you want to be careful of that. Right. Okay. So, well, we'll see if she writes back with some more information. Yeah, that'll be good. fine. Another thing that I think is really important and a lot of folks wouldn't think of it, but get back from your tower a little bit and use the best binoculars you can find or a telescope and look at your mast and look to see if your mast is vertical. Now that may oh. seem like, a really, really silly question. Todd, I'll get to yours in a second. Um, uh, but over the winter, especially, especially if you've had very high winds, mm -hmm. it is not impossible for a U-bolt to break or a, uh, um, the mass clamp on a rotator to fracture. Right. And if you're looking at that tower and why is my mass not straight? Yeah. That is something that you need to address, not not tomorrow you need to do right. it right now and uh, of course the, the cure kind of depends on if you have a crank up tower or need to climb right. how bad, the, how bad the, the tilt is do you need to get a crane in there or, or not do you have a thrust bearing in there are many questions my only point is this is an inspection you need to do with binoculars or a telescope or a transit just to make sure that the tower is straight is the mast also straight and if it's not you need to figure out why. Uh, the dielectric yeah. waterproofing filler, uh, sure, that stuff is that stuff is uh, is fine. Um, 
if I normally, if you have put it in initially, uh, I wouldn't necessarily take a connection apart if you've, you know, taken everything off and are have looked at the outer part of the coax connector. If it's nice and shiny like this, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, um, true, yeah. yeah. There are, there are uh, silicone-based uh, fillers that mm. are just fine, uh, yep. and that, those will help keep the weather out. What I normally do on my connectors, I don't use that, but I will put uh, some of the uh, a light silicone grease mm -hmm. uh, on the threads of a coax connector. And the best oh. stuff on the planet for that is called Dow Corning High Vacuum Grease. And it's oh. a... Um, it's a uh, it's a silicone based thing. I'm sure they use it on spacecraft and things like that. And it, uh, the, the little silicone particles get out of the way. It seems really weird. You're going metal to metal and you're putting an insulator yeah. silicone in between. But that works very well. In fact, I use adjoining elements as well. It's great stuff. Again, the point is you're trying to keep water out, not make the connection. The, right. the particles get out of the way. So um, so that's uh, that's what I use on on the threads is, is the Dow Corning um, uh, high vacuum grease and you can get it on Amazon and things like that. Um, the uh, the grounding of your tower also oh. this is something you don't think of that you know you, you ground it and you forget it. Well, right. if you run out to your tower or something and there's six inches of snow on the ground, you heavy boots you might not notice that if you've got a piece of this heavy grounding foil or even a ground wire and using that to get from the tower to your ground rod or ground rods maybe you stomped on it you didn't know it and all of a sudden your ground isn't there anymore oh um, and so yeah for people like us with all the yeah, I mean, three so feet of snow <laughs> that's a very good point never so even thought of that it doesn't take you any time but just take a look right. at it maybe grab it and jiggle it and if one end comes up in your hand yeah <laughs> maybe that's my saturday afternoon project for this week yeah. you know, gotta gotta fix it Right. Um, I'm, I mentioned ropes uh, supporting wire uh, yeah. antennas, especially. They may need replacing. Um, a, a marginal piece of rope will fail after a couple of months in direct sun, and okay. um, and also if you're if you're terminating in a tree, you probably have a pulley up top side coming down mm -hmm. and a counterweight, and you need to make sure that, you know the counterweight probably in the bushes or something like that after after some number of months of not walking out there, you need to take a look and make sure the critters haven't started to chew through the rope. Um, it's right. so much easier to replace a rope under control, like I said, than to have to deal with a rope that has gone up through a pulley and off and the end of it is off in the back 40. Now right. you have to figure out a way, how am I going to get that back up through the pulley? So uh, yeah. affirmative oh, action, yeah. shall we say, is always uh, is some, something that's a good uh, a good thing to do when yeah. you're dealing with ropes and such. Um, so I, I see that um, WI7FG posted, made a comment of Noah locks. And I Noah? think that's, is that the anti-critter stuff that, no, or what Noah is that locks one? is another compound, kind of like Penetrox. Oh, okay. Uh, Noah locks is, I'm sorry, I got, I got an itch here. I don't mean to be. That's quite all right. I'm I think I blew here. my nose show last week. Oh, so. that's what, <laughs> um, Noalox is another uh, compound. It typically is used for copper to aluminum connections. Oh, okay. Um, so it's it's good for uh, telescoping elements as well. Uh, yep. That's available at Home Depot and those <clears throat> things like that. It's a very common compound, right. and there's nothing nothing squirrely about that. I've used that for many many years, uh, yep. like Penetrox or like the the Dow Corning stuff, and it's all uh, good. Uh, just again, if you if you take the steps to ensure that you have cleaned the sections properly, uh, right. you'll, you'll go a long way towards making sure that uh, you're not going to have a problem with uh, with um, weather uh, getting in there. And the other thing that I think is, is really, really important after you've gone through all your ropes and your grounds and your wires and your antenna elements, um, if you have identified a problem, you're going to do something about it. That may involve a tower climb before you take one step on that tower, right. you need to do a rigorous inspection of your climbing gear. It's been sitting around for X number of months. Yep. Who knows? Maybe a mouse has tried to nibble on that. <laughs> but check check your your lanyard or your belt that goes around the tower. Check yep. your bungee cord. Remember, you got to have a, a double bungee cord on your climbing harness. 
to yeah. uh, make sure that you've always got uh, two or three points of uh, connection to the tower yeah. and make sure that the bungee cord is all 100%. Make sure that everything about your belt going around you uh, is all nice and supple and not cracked and stiff and things like that. If you've right. had it, been storing it out in the garage, there may be temperature variations that you don't see in your house and and so True. things things weather differently out there right. and this is absolutely the number one thing to do before any correction check your climbing gear thoroughly yes. uh, my mantra there is there are old tower climbers there are bold tower climbers but there are no old bold tower climbers be right. safe and uh Fortunately, if, if your tower is is big enough, you don't have to wear one of these when you go up the thing. But uh, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, be safe with your, uh, your climbing equipment so that you can come down the tower and actually enjoy getting on the radio uh, right. and, uh, and not being splattered on uh, at the base of the tower. Those, yeah. are, uh, those are a lot of the things that come to mind mm -hmm. um, when, when you're getting into the springtime uh, antenna season. Uh, right. Obviously, you, know, you start by checking SWR, but sometimes SWR can be finicky and you don't always see things happen. And so uh, the physical inspection is what's really important. And, uh, you know, any any place where I have host clamps or things like that on a, on a beam that I'm building, I have sprayed it with Rust-Oleum all around that that uh, hose clamp to make sure that it protects the hose clamp, even though it says it's stainless steel. And yeah I'm gonna be sure and then it, that helps also seal the connection point just a little bit better a, a coat right. uh, a coating of um of uh primer coat and then same color either aluminum or gray uh, is, right. is, is great stuff and that that really yeah. helps 50 year old tower climb replace my equipment every three years even if it looks okay good advice yeah. I agree. Now, yeah, you'll, you'll you'll live to be a much older tower climber than than uh, fifty. But uh, good job. And uh, well, maybe huh. he's been climbing towers for fifty years. He didn't mm. really specify. <laughs> well, I suppose. Yes, obviously, oh. Robin. Yes, so you need oh, to you check your coax. Uh, that's again part of the SWR thing, and and it's always good to keep a log of what your reading is yeah. on. I'm lazy about that and I don't, but you know, you can see in a heartbeat, uh, okay, beams pointed north, SWR on this band, here's this curve, just tick, 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 or you know, if it's if, right. you've, got, if you've got an AA35 or one of the, the rig expert or other VNA type things, you can just do a plot and print it and store it. And then you can see with the beams pointing the same direction, which is important if there were any, if there's anything in the area to see oh, if there's yeah. anything changed about the curve and if there is something right. significantly changed you can ask yourself hmm why is that oh, he says he is 50 okay <laughs> to specify yeah and uh, the, oh, the previous, the previous uh, person there yet yeah, uh, the tower cranks over uh, that's a great thing again a good reminder to make sure the cabling is all good but yes that gives you an opportunity to check mm -hmm. a bunch of elements take it back up rotate 180 degrees bring it back down check the rest of the elements and you'll always right. be in good shape there yeah that's uh robin g1 mhu over in the uk and uh after the show last week we had a video chat and he was sitting outside with a glass of wine and he had his radio set up on the patio table and took the phone around and gave us a whole tour of of his tower and antennas out back so you know it's kind of fun way to check things out but i said you know that's a really it kind of made me think you know i started to talk about maintenance and you know this is a good idea let me let's expand on that a little bit more and you know for some of the newer hams out there that you know uh, may not necessarily have big towers like you know like we've got in our yard or the setup like you they may just have one piece of coax you know sneaking through a window but it's still important to check on all of that it doesn't matter whether you got a big tower or one wire sticking out of your house because mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that could go wrong, and it's yeah, better and to start it, there. It is. It's all it's all in play. You know, a lot of folks have uh, small beams, especially on uh, the stackable military mass that you can see at the conventions, and we both use for field day. And yep. um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> anything about that uh, the the U bolts that you clamp. Say maybe you got a vertical on there. The U bolts that are right. clamped on there. You know, are they? Uh, is the hardware starting to deteriorate? If it's not stainless steel hardware. 
and you can still get it off, get it right. off, go to stainless steel, make sure you lubricate the threads though with stainless steel because stainless steel will gall. It won't rust, but it will gall. And mm. if you lubricate it with the Penetrox or Noalox or even motor oil, anything like right. that will, will I'll prevent galling of this, uh, the uh, nuts to the bolts. I don't think I've ever heard that term before. Gall is like G A L L. G A L L I N G. Yes, it's a. Uh, it, it's. It, uh, I can describe the physics of it to you, but it's kind of unique to stainless steel, where the uh, the the nuts and the bolts want to amalgamate. They kind of want to to mate and hold on to each other, and literally, you yeah. know, once once it happens, you you hit on it with your uh, your wrench and the. Right. Uh, the bolt twists off. <laughs> it might as well oh, be. Yeah. But again, if you lubricate it, you'll never have the problem. It just. Cool. Hi, Laura. Laura Hi, down Laura. in Denver. <laughs> and uh, so we've had people checking in from all over. So throughout the uh, the show here today, rather than me giving everybody a verbal shout out and sharing your comments here. And it's so nice to see so many people joining in and um, just sharing some of the links after the show's over, I'll post in um, links to the products that Chip's been talking about. But again, I think what's really nice um, is that these are all items like this Penetrax is $17, a roll of, of the coax seal $3.99. So we're not talking about, I mean, you've already invested in your shack and your antennas and towers and everything else. So you don't necessarily have to spend gazillions of dollars to make small repairs. And, and of course, anybody at our stores could provide advice. If you've got some questions about the best ways to deal with some of these issues that you're running into. So, Oh, we've got a question here from squirrel Dave. damage. Yes. Squirrel yeah. damage. <laughs> you know all about squirrels. So Dave is asking thoughts on pinning the mask to the rotator clamp. Yeah. Well, you know, that is uh, a topic that will usually be, uh, Cause some like lively, its own show? Debate, no. <laughs> lively debate. My thought on it, my personal philosophy on that is, and I use a rotator that's got a hole uh, drilled so you can put a pinning uh, bolt through it. I feel that if the system is, you know, if you don't have torque balance on the beams or something, if that mast wants to crank that badly, mm -hmm. I would rather let it crank. Gotcha. Because, of, because, you know, if it really is pinned, then something else is going to be the fracture point. And I would hate to have the clamp fracture. I would rather have the beam turn a little bit. And on a ASU rotator, so for example, you can just, you know, move the pointer around physically. A lot of the rotators let you do that and right. you know, deal with it at some point. If it's 20 or 30 degrees, just, just be done with it. You know, right. yeah, your, yeah, your zero point or your 180 point is different, but you uh, just deal with it. I would much rather have that happen. And uh, and, and hello, yeah. uh, hello, uh, Michael in Deutschland. <laughs> uh, sorry about Friedrichshafen this year. But yeah, yeah. I, oh, I'm yeah. not a big fan of pinning. Um, I suppose if you've got a Mongo rotator and Mongo grade eight bolts and Mongo this and Mongo that, and maybe you can do that. Uh, and I suppose it also depends on how easy it is to to re uh, uh, position the antenna if you do have to go up and climb and loosen the clamps and, and put it back to zero. Sure. Um, things like the ASU rotators and probably some others have 450 degrees of travel, so you do have a little bit of fudge there, right? And um, where the overlap is, and so that's that makes it nice. But yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of pinning. I would rather rather something if you want to go that badly go ahead and slide. We'll deal with it later. Yeah, no, very good point. Well, these have all been awesome tips and tricks and I appreciate you joining our shack chat here today and providing your sage advice. And even though we seem to be close together, we, you know, we did have a safe discussion today. I have my, my mask, my mom made my mask. So I've got my, my fancy mask here and I saw what you, um, you know, the, the gang down in Anaheim, oh, pardon me, my ear balls are falling out here. Um, <laughs> my ear plugs, um, you know, everybody in the stores are wearing theirs as well. Yeah. And um, we're continuing to operate as usual, other than the fact that unfortunately you can't 
go in and visit all of the products in our staff, but um, all this, the phones are open, <coughs> internet orders, here we go again. <clears throat> and we can slip the items out the door for you, so. Yep, everybody's being safe. You know, we have a lot of communications, first responders, uh, uh, police and fire folks are always having to replace scanners and things like that. Oh, true. And of course, everybody that's in RACES and ARES and things like that, um, those are essential services mm -hmm. and everybody is, is there ready and willing to serve and help and provide advice and, and get you things that'll keep you on the air and you know, we don't know where this is going, but we do know no. it's going to end. But for now, uh, just if we all are safe, uh, we'll be good. And everybody needs to figure out what they're going to do on field day. And it'll be different this year. But, hey, that's what ham oh, radio yeah. is about, adapting, figuring out new ways to get things done. Don't have to do things the same way every year. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a virus here that's putting a curveball on us. <clears> uh, <throat> let's deal with it. So yep, I agree. In the backyard or you know, find yourself a, a place to hike up to a mountaintop by yourself and set up a right. rifle and have fun. <laughs> well, you know, there you go. There's um, a, a good uh, one of our discussions coming up in the near future. We're going to have to talk about field day. It's not that far away. And we're going to, uh, oh, let's see. We're going to, uh, we'll just talk about that another time. So, <laughs> well, you know, one, one quick last thing. I did do a little promo earlier. Oh, Mike is telling you you did a great job. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for looking, watching us. Yeah. So um, I just want to remind everybody, check your mailbox soon because dun, 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 look what's arriving. The new the catalog. spring catalog. <laughs> Isn't that beauteous? All right. So I've just got this set up here, but you can go to our website. Check it out on the main page. You just I'm just going to pop over here and show you. When you're at our homepage, or actually any of them, you just click over here where it says more. Oops, my page moved on me. And there you go, HRO catalog. So <clears throat> while you're waiting for it to show up in your mailbox, you can just go over here, click view catalog, and you'll have it. And you hear the pages turn just like everything else. Or you can download it and look at it. Yeah, go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing, I'm, seeing, I'm losing my voice again. So it's a good thing I've had you here today. So let me go back to this. So that would be, I think that's our show for the week. What do you think? I think it's good. Everybody have a great weekend. Get on the air. Uh, if you haven't been checking 10 meters and 6 meters, you mm. need to do that. 10 and 6 both have been open to South America and the Pacific. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing lots of reports from around the country. The Midwest has had a lot of action into uh, – the uh into south america uh here at lunchtime yesterday we had a big opening to hawaii on six meters and oh, nice. um, and uh, until about eight o'clock at night uh, wow. a couple of nights ago uh the caribbean was in here in california mm -hmm. and last night until at least 10 o'clock at night Australia was coming in on 10 and of course 15 meters as well. Right. Uh, Japan and uh, the Pacific were all coming in on 15. So the bands are open. You're stuck they inside. Are. Gee, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what we could do about this. Get on the air and have fun, everybody. 73 That's have a right. great weekend from California. Thank you, Chip. Appreciate you joining us here on the Ham Radio Outlet Shack Chat. I'm Katie WY7YL. Here saying 73, everybody, stay radioactive. Bye, Bye for now.